right, we're back with video number seven in our Getting Started with Pro Tools Basics video series. So in this video, we're going to record some more audio tracks, some more guitar parts, and we're going to learn how to punch in and out and do some different editing things we didn't do in the last one. So hope you enjoy it. Thanks. Let's dig in. So before we do anything else, we're going to do a save as. So if you go to the file menu, it says save as. So we need to make this song a little more than a one chord vamp. We have this eight measure thing going on. So let's do this. Let's put what's called a marker in. So you can see your markers by command, that infamous command button, command five on your keypad, your numeric keypad. Shows and hides. So we got our first marker, should be at bar three. So I hit the enter button and there's the markers. And you're gonna call this A because it's the first part of the song. A1, A. Bar five, it goes around again, the pattern. So I'm gonna hit enter and that A, one B, let's say, right? Okay, so now we know a new section is going to come right there. And that's going to be, uh, I don't know, let's go to the, the, the D chord. We'll go to the four chord. So we'll call that four. Let's go to the drums, right? And let's just take all of them. So I'm holding down the shift button and I'm clicking all around to get that to happen. Let's hit repeat. Let's hit one. Now we know the whole thing is repeating. So we're going to go to this track, and this is our telly track. So I'm going to plug that guitar in, make sure it's in tune, and then we're going to come up with a part. So this is kind of how the process would go if I was writing, recording, coming up with parts. You know, it's not necessarily linear. It's as Cool. So we did a four chord, and then over here we went to a five chord somewhere. So let's. Did that on the fly. You'll notice I didn't put the cursor there first. I hit the enter key on the fly, and because we were in grid mode, it landed it right at the top of the measure, which is the grid was selected for the measure. So now I'm going to unplug this. Sorry. Grab the strat and play a little part above that. So we're going to start on the four. So here's an interesting thing you can do if you don't know where you are and you got it, you don't want to look around too much. You can take your memory locator and you can hit that four marker, and there you are. That one was okay, but we need to do something to the end. So let's paste that to the comp. Let's go back to slip mode, which is hitting the function two key. Spread our view, clean up all the guitar noise, junk stuff. So we know we want to punch in on the five chord. So I can just hit this on the five chord and I can get that part right now. All right, so that was, that was okay, but let's duplicate. So I can take these five chord guys, do our fade move. So let me grab the bass. All right, 64P bass is back, and I'm sure it's out of tune by now, so let's check it. Okay, cool. So in the first one, the bass stopped and started a bit. So this should be a continuous motion. Let's see if we can get the bass to have a little more motion on it. So that's the idea, poorly executed, so let's go for number three. All right, so now what we're seeing there is this little part before kind of threw me off. So let's listen to that. All 
If let's say I want to play with just the drums, I'm sick of the click. And I want to play bass and drums. Okay, so now I'm going to hit it. And they're solo, so you should hear it, right? The kick, snare, and hat are generated from the MIDI. So I have to solo these to hear it. But that's way too much work. We're going to learn about solo safing. So solo safe is when you hold the famous command key, click on the solo button, it's grayed out. That means you can solo other things and what's coming from the solo safe tracks will still be heard. So that was pretty good. So let's go back and get rid of the first two takes because they're a wholly different idea. And let's see if I can go a little better. If not, I got that. Okay, cool. I think we have something there. I want to undo the solo on all of them or solo everybody, all you have to do is hold the option and click. If I option clicked, it would solo everything. If I option click, it'll unsolo everything. So I'm gonna take out our record and we're going to hit save. I think what I really just like is that little slide at the end. So let's go back to the DI, the first one, copy that, put that on the comp, make sure it comes in at the beginning. We didn't discuss this, so let's talk about that. When I peel this back, these two parts are very close. So we need to make our own crossfade. When I pull the cursor down, I get that X, and I can make a crossfade that way. The reason I can do all these moves is I have this selected up here. If I have that, it, it will just give me whatever tool is selected. So this one's the grabber tool. all the different ones. If I have this, it's a smart tool. Which means wherever I move the cursor allows me to do different functions. Hopefully smart. So let's go to the end. So the, the little bass slide I dug on the other one. So let's grab that. So I don't know if that's the exact spot, but you'll see what I'm going to do. I copy it, I'm going to paste it. So will it sound better doing this? Let's see. And let's highlight all the bass parts and do our fades. So thanks again for watching these Pro Tools Tips videos. We do appreciate it. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Also hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so we can let you know when we have more like this coming. Thanks again. Whoa.